Well, hello, C++ programmers. Brian Malloy here, and this video is going to be about why we should prefer initialization to assignment. I've talked about how to prefer initialization over assignment in a previous video, and I talked about how to do it because sometimes when you first see the syntax, it looks strange. So I have, uh, maybe this is the example I did. I think it is, I'm not sure, but this kind of colon and an initialization list here containing two data attributes, age and IQ. Initializing them with the parens sometimes is a shock to a, to a new C++ programmer's system, and they just don't know what to make of it. So I've tried to describe that, and I hope you are getting used to it. In this video, I'd like to offer you some, some reasons why we want to go through that torture, why it might be worth it, other than just, well, I told you so, you know, that's because I said so. That's right, I said so. You know, that's the, that doesn't really work with kids, you know, above the age of five, I guess, or maybe never it works, I don't know. But anyway, so here's the example I did, and in this case, I don't see much advantage to doing it this way, except other than you know, just getting used to it and accustomed to it, and that I personally think it looks better. However, I don't see a big efficiency advantage in this one. So what I did is, uh, so that's why I titled this Not Here, you know. So let's go, let me get rid of this and just look. Uh, let's go to Y here. And what I've done is I've created this little, actually, I haven't created this. I've done this actually in previous videos uh, about how to write uh, constructors and member functions in the presence of a pointer. And in this case, especially in the presence of pointers, um, there's a huge efficiency advantage to preferring initialization to assignment. So we've written this, this class before, except this is slightly different in that I have put an output statement in, in a lot of the member functions. So here's the default constructor, and I put an output uh, statement that strangely enough says default. It's shocking. Here is the conversion constructor and in the conversion constructor I've put an output statement that says convert. Here it says copy and in assignment it says assign. And I didn't put anything in the destructor though I think it would be informative to do so so that you could see when things get uh, deleted and, and if they get deleted even. And I've got a class here called student and this should say probably C++ student, but it doesn't. And it has a constructor that does not repeat, does not prefer initialization to assignment. However, we're not going to mess with this right away. First, let's look at main. In main, I exercise the three constructors, default, convert, and copy. So let's first recognize that this is a copy constructor. You don't believe it? Okay, so we'll run it. In fact, I'll make clean, go to the top, show you there's no executable. I got save in there. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so there we've got that. Let me go to the back. Let me compile it, run it, and you see default convert copy. Why is it default convert and copy? Let me just move this aside a little bit. Well, there's the default. There's the convert, and there's the copy. Now, you might be used to a different syntax, um, you know, with you might be more comfortable with this, but that is exactly the same thing. Watch, I'll compile it, run it, and you get default convert copy. And in fact, this notation might be more useful to you, you know, you, you might be more accustomed to it. So I could say int i gets 99, and that'll initialize i to 99. You won't know that because I'm not, whoa, I didn't use it. So I get a warning that I didn't use it, but I run it, you know, and I don't get any output. So I don't want to mess with that. However, this video is not about what gets called, uh, which constructors get called, but why should I prefer initialization to assignment? So I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to declare a student called, um, oh, what was his name? Uh, Peter. I think his name was Peter Quill. But his real name is Star Lord, and I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, uh, Peter is not the brightest guy in the world, but he sure has a good heart. And I hope he didn't write this class because it's awful. Now let me just show you what happens here. Let me uh, compile it and run it. 
uh, this shocking thing. So let me compile it. Compiles without a warning or anything. You know, we're actually, uh, we're, we didn't use Peter, but who cares? I don't know why I didn't get a warning about that. But anyway, I instanti instantiate Peter and I uh, pass star lord into n and I actually use assignment. Disgusting, isn't it? Why? Well, because some things are going to happen. Let me just run it and show you what happens. We get actually three constructor calls, kind of, or not constructor calls, but three function calls. By the way, these are expensive function calls. Why do we get default convert and assign? Well, let me see if I can convince you. First of all, the C++ compiler sees a constructor here. Okay, there's the constructor. That's the name of the constructor because constructors always have the same name as the class. There is the parameter, const char star n. And then what it does is it looks for an initialization list. But this guy didn't bother writing one. It didn't write an initialization list. So the compiler says, whoa, I don't get this. This guy didn't even write an initialization list. Is he just a lazy bum or what? Who knows? But you know what? I'm worried. The compiler worries. It's a worrier. It's type A and it worries. And what is it worried about? It's worried that it's not going to do its job properly. What's its job? A constructor's job is to allocate space and initialize variables. Well, we don't have any pointer variables here, so we don't have to worry about allocating space with new. However, we do have a data attribute called name, and this guy did not initialize it. All data attributes must be initialized before you get to the body of the constructor. Okay, so what does the compiler do? It says, well, this guy didn't supply a, an initialization list, so I'm going to use the default constructor because it looks like this is a default constructor call. I just showed you that. So the, the compiler is going to use the default constructor to initialize name. That's why we get default. Now, where does the convert come from? Well, this guy has this assignment operator here. And actually, what this looks like is this. Operator uh, equals, um, and we want to pass in, uh, I'm sorry, n. This is what it looks like. Uh, name dot operator equals. That's what it actually looks like. Okay, so if I come back up here and compile this, and run it, I get the same thing. Really, these are the same. Why are they the same? Well, this is just, this right here is just syntactic sugar. And I've explained this probably ad nauseum, but this is the infix expression, right? And here we're using kind of like a, a Java or a Python notation, name.operator equal n. And I, I would call this, uh, is it kind of pr uh, prefix? I don't know, we could argue about that. But anyway, it's name dot operator equal and maybe it's still infix there's the operator name there's the operator here's the uh, the call this is the this and that's the parameter okay but we want to do it the other way but let me just show you operator equal on name name is a string and operator equal if we look up here takes a string but we're not passing a string we're passing a char star and the compiler says, well, there's no function that matches operator equal char star. However, I do have a conversion constructor that will convert n to a string. So it then calls this conversion constructor right here, passes n in here, and that's why I get convert right there. And then after it converts n to a string, it uses the assignment operator, so that's where we get assign. So let's, let's go through this again. Let me get rid of this because that's just trying to explain what it really looks like. So here's what happens. No initialization list, got to initialize it somehow, use default. There's default, okay? All right, now we have name equals n. n's a char star, no match, so I got to convert it to a string, uses a conversion constructor to convert it to a string, and finally it uses assignment. Now that's disgusting. Why is it disgusting? Because I can be so much more efficient. All I have to do is use an initialization list, put name n, whoops, sorry, get rid of this, even bring this up so it's more succinct, and now I am actually the programmer. I, the programmer, am going to say, well, I know that we have to initialize 
all the data attributes of a class. So I'm going to make an initialization list right here. And I'm going to tell you how I want you to initialize this data attribute. Initialize this data attribute using the conversion constructor. And then we're done. So watch. We've just reduced 3 to 1, convert. So we used default, convert, and assign. And, and before, now we're only using convert. And by the way, these are expensive member functions. Just take a look at assignment. Look at assignment. Well, first, we have to do this if. Then we have to do a delete. That's a, a heap manipulation, and those are expensive. Then we have to do an, an, an allocation. That's expensive. Then we have to do the string copy and return star this. All because the guy didn't bother to use an initialization list. Look at the efficiency. You know, and sometimes people say, well, C++ isn't that fast. Well, of course it isn't if you're writing crappy code. You know, if you're not bothering to use an initialization list. So my point here is, Use initialization lists. Get into the habit. They can be especially efficient um, in various situations, and this is certainly one of them. And you might want to think about what situations, other than this one, they might be very efficient. And I don't want to keep going on this or elaborate it, but my, my idea here is to, to A, encourage you to use an initialization list. Just get used to it, and it'll become as common as anything else you program. And secondly, no, I want to give you an explanation of why you want to prefer initialization to assignment. And the answer is you can save yourself a lot of, um, you can save the compiler a lot of uh, time doing things it doesn't need to do. So I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some motivation to use initialization lists. Happy programming. Brian Malloy, over and out.